high-tech criminals using artificial intelligence could fool you into thinking your loved one is in danger. So what do you need to know about this new scam and how can you protect yourself and your children? AI is our big story today. Well, we've all heard of phone scams, specifically the grandparent scam, where someone calls and pretends to be your own family member, claiming that they're in trouble. And now AI is up in the ante, allowing anyone to use a snippet of your loved one's voice and then manipulate it. And that means you could answer a phone call and think your son or daughter's on the other end of the line, but it just sounds like them. And turns out it's fake. It happened to one mother while her own daughter was away on a ski trip. My daughter's voice crying and sobbing, um, saying, Mom. And I'm like, okay, what happened? She's like, Mom, these bad men have me. Help me, help me. I started to wonder, like, if these people were, like, asking to track my mom and, like, pick her up, like, they could have obviously been, like, putting some information together to try and track me or some of my siblings to actually make this a reality. Um, so it definitely scared me. It was not reality. The girl was safe and her mom quickly realized it was a scam, but that's not always the case. Here locally, area police departments say they haven't seen this scenario just yet, but they're preparing for the problem. Third ABC's Ethan Watts talked with an officer today about what parents need to know. Ethan. Yeah, Sergeant Parcell from the Perrysburg Police Department says it could be the scariest call a parent or grandparent could get. He says this type of scam is growing and law enforcement groups are putting out a few ways to make sure that you know how to tell if a call is real or if it's fake. Parcell says as hard as it may be, may, may be, first off, you have to remain calm and use common sense. This may be hard due to given how serious the call may seem, but it could be the deciding factor between reaching for your wallet and hanging up that phone. Other things to consider are things like having a safe word with your child or family. Another option is a phrase that would trigger a response only that person would know. It could help you figure out if it is your family member or not. Parcel says the best way to be prepared is to have a conversation between you and your family. Just to kind of sit down with your family. I mean, open lines of communication is always going to be key to building a better family and being able to prevent types of scams like this, but also just sitting down and explaining what's going on, the realities of life right now. Now, Sergeant Purcell says if you do receive one of these calls, hang up and then try to contact your family member or friend who supposedly is calling or someone they're with. All right, Ethan, you mentioned that the safe word where the call and response is one tactic. Any other ways to identify if it's actually your family member on the line? Now, Tina, Sergeant Parcell did tell me another great way to find out if it is really a family member is to ask them questions that only they would know. Avoid things they may have put on social media, things like memories or encounters that only you and that person have had are a great way to know if it's really them. All right, Ethan, some great advice there from the Perrysburg Police Department. Well, this comes as the head of Google, Microsoft, and other companies pioneering artificial intelligence are set to meet with the vice president at the White House tomorrow. That meeting meant to underscore the responsibility when it comes to developing artificial intelligence tools like chat GPT. A White House official says it's part of a broader effort here to engage with different industries on the issues surrounding artificial intelligence. And these types of voice scams are becoming increasingly common, not just in the U.S., but in other countries as well. There's a new survey that found that more than half of people in India say they've fallen for some sort of AI voice scam or know someone who has. That's nearly twice the global average of 25%. And of those who said they were victims, 83% said they lost money as part of that scam. This survey was conducted with more than 7,000 people across seven countries. And it's not just phone calls, videos, commercials, and plenty of other things you might encounter might not be what they seem. It's a powerful tool that's already being deployed ahead of the 2024 election. Donnie O'Sullivan has the story. You might have seen this already, but I want you to watch it. Uh, it's a political ad. The hills closed the city of San Francisco this morning, citing the escalating crime and fentanyl crisis. Did that even happen? Did San Francisco even, like, get shut down? Like, oh, okay, I was like, that didn't happen. <laughs> a recent ad from the Republican National Committee imagines a dystopian future if President Biden is re-elected. And in Bolton, China, invades Taiwan. But all isn't as it seems. So all the images in that ad were actually created using AI, artificial intelligence. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Images are powerful, you know, and that this ability to create so many images so rapidly 
It's an incredibly powerful tool. New artificial intelligence technology makes it easy to create fake images that can look very realistic, like these created by artist and online trust and safety expert Tim Boucher. This kind of image making can be democratized at such a scale and that basically anybody can use it to to impact the global conversation on, on pretty much any topic. From the comfort of his garage turned workshop in Canada, he has created all sorts of fake images. Imagining Vladimir Putin as a hippie, Governor Ron DeSantis at Disney, even President Reagan surrendering to the Soviets. He says he's creating the images to make people more aware of the powers of AI. Some people will just say, you are creating misinformation, stop doing that. We don't have that luxury of waiting anymore. These things are happening in real time. We've got to find ways to, to talk about it and to be upfront about what are both the good things and the bad things that can come of it. Political campaigns have long used advertising to imagine the disaster that awaits if their rivals get elected. Yeah. Like this 1964 ad from President Lyndon B. Johnson that imagined a nuclear apocalypse. <laughs> Last year, a fake video purporting to show the Ukraine president surrendering to Russia emerged online. It was a deep fake video made using AI. It's not just I can create a fake uh, audio of you, Joe Biden, whomever. It's that I can broadcast to that world instantaneously through social media. Hanny Fareed is a digital forensic expert and professor at UC Berkeley. 50% of the views happen in the first few minutes. So even by the time I figure out something is fake, Hours, days have gone by. It doesn't matter. It's over. Millions of people have already seen it. Greetings to all. But not all uses of this technology need to be nefarious. In India, AI was used to make it look like this politician delivered an address in multiple languages. This video is a deep fake. Now, Delhi has a chance to change it all. Imran Ahmed, who runs an organization tracking misinformation and online hate, says the Republican Party's AI ad isn't in itself dangerous. It's a gateway, potentially, to much more dangerous uses of AI. For example, trying to deep fake President Biden saying, I'm wel welcoming immigrants into the country, or President Biden saying, I'm going to force everyone to take a vaccine. Texas already has a law on its books against certain uses of deep fakes in the weeks leading up to an election. But it's not clear how enforceable that law actually is. So you might spot there's a tiny this morning, and then boom, disclaimer at the top that says it's made in a with AI. Oh, I'm blind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. While some people we showed the ad to outside the White House knew it was fake, all of the images in it are actually fake. Yes. I would believe it. looked it. like a video game. Right. Others weren't so confident. I don't think I would have known that was made with AI if you hadn't said anything. Meanwhile, fake calls, not the only thing. Artificial intelligence is being used to fool people. Pay Facebook's parent company Meta has taken down a network of more than 100 fake social media accounts. Meta says those accounts use those deep fake images, which we just heard about, that are generated by artificial intelligence to seem legitimate, alluring more than 15,000 followers. Those profiles posed as U.S. and European organizations, but were actually based in China and promoting pro-Beijing talking points. The accounts posted negative articles about critics of the Chinese government and offered to pay people to attend protests. According to Meta, the network is not tied to the Chinese government, but individuals associated with the Chinese technology company. And as a reminder, you can always watch the full big story on the 13 ABC News app. It is available as a free download in your app store.